According to the Oxford Dictionary, accountability is when you take ownership of what happens as a result of your choices and actions. But to put that in, in real context, accountability is when you accept blame for the things that you have done wrong and accept that you can influence the healing of those things. When you accept that you can contribute to the process going better for you and other people. It's when you don't pass responsibility onto someone else. It's when you don't blame other people for the things that you have done. It's when you literally own, like I made choices, I did things that led to this outcome, but I also know I have the influence to be able to have an impact and make things go better moving forward. And try not to think about it in terms of right or wrong, Think about it like this. If I'm hanging out with a friend and I take longer to get ready than I said, by the time we leave, we pull out of my street and there's a police officer there that pulls us over. My friend might turn to me and say, this is your fault. Had we left on time, this police officer would not have met with us. Like, did I do anything wrong? No. But like, am I accountable to the outcome of those decisions? Yes. So I think accountability is when you just accept everything, good or bad, is a consequence of my choices and actions. I also think it's important that we learn to take accountability for positive things, which we tend to not do. One of the things you're going to experience in this journey with Freddie is he started accepting accountability and responsibility for his flaws but he had a very hard time accepting responsibility for his positive traits and some of the positive outcomes. And we all have a tendency to do that. But the truth is accountability means you accept your role in everything, be it good, be it bad. It doesn't matter. You, you are accepting ownership that life is a consequence of the things you do, the things you say, the way you behave and how you conduct yourself. Welcome back to Family Therapy. I'm your host, Elliot Connie. What's been better since you listened to the previous episode? Today is spent directly focusing on Freddie, who is Jay's father. I'm very excited for us to spend this episode doing a deep dive into Freddie's life because we're about to go on a journey of fatherhood. We're gonna learn about his childhood, about his traumas, about his tragedies, about his mistakes he made as a father, but more importantly, about his desire to journey back and heal some of the family relationships that were severed throughout his life. This journey is going to be difficult. And in this conversation, you're going to start seeing the first steps of a man trying to reclaim his family. Freddie, what's been better since we last chatted? Oh, man, you know, I just, when I wake up in the morning, I'll be like, I'll be blessed. God woke me up. Now the rest of the day is up to me. So I got to make the best of it. As you wake up every day, like thankful and blessed, what do you notice that gives you a clue that things are going in a direction that you're pleased with? No, it starts off when I make my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. and that kind of, you know, puts me in a, in a great mood. You know what I mean? It starts my day off great. Okay. Does that happen? Does that happen every day? Practically, yeah, every morning, yeah, actually, yeah. I need that little pick me up to get me started. Excellent. Okay. What else has been going in a way that you're pleased with? Uh, once, once I got to work, uh, my workload wasn't that, that I didn't have a big workload today. I just had like, you know, a couple of repairs. I had one emergency. My day, my day went kind of smooth. What do you do to make sure your day keeps going smooth? I, I try to be, have a positive frame of mind. You know, I, I don't try like this little, little things that annoy me. You know what I mean? Like sometimes uh, I, I let things annoy me, you know, aggravate me. Like this, this, this dog is trying to aggravate me now. They want me to pet him. Go, go downstairs. Go, go your mommy. Go, go. So how do you keep a positive frame of mind? How do you, how do you do that? I mean, it, we live in such a negative, harsh world. It's kind of hard. How do you, how do you keep a positive frame of mind? Well, I don't, I, I try to stay uh, mellow, you know what I mean? I don't like let things get on my skin, you know what I mean? Like, like normally I think, uh, like, I'm, I'm driving to work and somebody want to buy me 
blowing the horn. I just pull over, let them go past. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And have you always been that way? No, no. I, you know, I used to have rural rage. You know, what I mean, being in the, in the car when, it, when, it, like, say, if a car was making a a, a left turn, I, I won't, let, I won't let them make the turn. Nowadays, I, tomorrow I try to make a turn, I, I slow down, let them make the turn. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man. it ain't, it ain't that serious, man. You know, it ain't that serious. Some, some things people just take so seriously. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. When they really have to. When did you learn to be that way? I'm going to ask you a really important question in a minute, but when did you learn to to stop being about the rose rage and taking everything so serious? When did you learn to be that way? Well, I I, I think about three or four years ago, life is too short to be angry at, at the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. How did you develop that mindset? Well, I, I think about during this COVID time, so many people was leaving the, leaving this earth, man. Like. Wow, like almost every month, I, you know, either I had a, a tenor funeral, you know what I mean, or I heard about somebody uh, had just passed away, you know, and it's it just like, wow, man, like, then I'd be seeing, sometimes I'd be seeing some guys that you know, I went to high school with, and they was like, damn, man, you look you look the same, like, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't aged since high school, and then I'd be saying, I'd be in the back of my mind, like, I can't say damn, you look you look you look, look, look the same too. He looked like he's ninety nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm <Right>. thankful. <laughs> but you know, I thank God for that. You know what I mean? The little gray hairs and I thank God for that because like there's so many of my, my people I grew up with that I went to high school, they you know, they already gone, man. And like I got I, I gotta be thankful for that. Cause like it was one time in my life, man, I was just living from hour to hour, you know what I mean? Right. I was just so into so much stuff, man. You know, one time I was, I was, um, this, this is a true story. I, I could almost start crying about this. Uh, me and the few of the fellas was on the block. We was, uh, we had a beef with some Jamaican guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The one that Jamaican guys pull up, start busting shots. So we, we running, he busting shots and stuff, right? So we, we get, we get home. I said, ain't nobody get hit, nobody get hit, right? So I look at I look at my shirt, it got all these holes in it. I'm like, like, huh? You know what I mean? How in the hell my shirt have holes in it and I don't got no no bullet holes in it? Wow. Everybody looking at me like, you sure you're right? You're sure? Yeah, bro, I'm I, I'm I. You know? I don't know if I was running so fast, my shirt was in the, like, no, nah, like Batman have his <laughs> cake in the shirt. Yeah. I don't know if that was the situation or not, but, oh my God, it was just like, it was it was just mind bothering, you know what I mean? You know, I've been in so many touch and go things in my life, man, and I always, I just live so recklessly, you know what I mean? Hmm. I, I'll just be amazed how I'm, I, I'm still here. That's an incredible story. Even if you were running in your clothes, you know, got caught in the air like Batman's cape. That still means the bullets came <laughs> super close to you. Yes, close. Yeah, it didn't absolutely. hit you. It didn't hit me. Thank God for that. Yeah. You know, Freddie, it makes me think you must, after all the things you survived, you must really know that time is precious. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, I do. Is that, um, is that why? Because the last time we talked. One of the things that was really important to you was reconnecting with your kids. Yeah, it is. Is it that is. why it's... reconnecting with your kids is so important? No, basically, yeah, but that's primarily not the only reason. You know, because I'm I'm a family oriented person. You know, uh, mm-hmm. far as like where I was raised. You know, I was raised with both my parents. Mm-hmm. You know, I had, I had a pretty tremendous. Uh, I would say childhood you know I, I don't never remember a day i didn't get enough for my birthday you know we wasn't rich rich but it wasn't a place where i don't ever remember we was going hungry or we ain't had no food or you know stuff like that mm-hmm. so uh and, it, and i think my father he wasn't a, 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 a how would i say um uh, uh not emotional or like he didn't really always say 
express his as as his love for me verbally. Mm-hmm. He expressed his love for me like uh being there, taking me places. Uh it's funny because like I used to, I, I don't I used to hate coming home sometime because I used to come home and my house be full of full of kids and people. Mm-hmm. And and now and I never realized uh, my father used to take like we used to live in the projects and he used to like rent uh little little buses and you know take kids to the to the uh beach with us and all that. And I used to hate it, you know what I mean? And at the time I didn't realize it until I got older why he was doing those type of things. You know what I mean? And and I, once I realized, you know, you little, you want your father to be uh uh solely, you know, all his attention on you, you know, but he got all these other kids with, you know, you know, he got a watch and, and stuff like that. And like I said, I didn't realize that at that time, those those kids probably didn't have a father. They had nobody to take them nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was, it, and I didn't realize that until I got old. And I remember when we first got a color TV in our house. And, and I don't think, um, you know, big floor models with the record player <laughs> and the cassette. And, and, and my house was always full with people, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't, you know, half of them, you know, that's when TV, for TV, Color TVs first came out, you know, and I don't think half the people really even had color TVs then, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize all that stuff until I got older, you know what I mean? Like, ah, uh, you know what I mean? And I, I used to hate people always knocking on my door to want to borrow sugar or bread. And I used to, and my parents open that door. Look, what? Oh, see what that is. I knew I used to, I used to slam the door on people's faces, and it's like, no, we don't got it. We don't got it. And they said, what? Well, who was that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, somebody want to borrow some bread. They're like, I'm like, open that door, boy. I can hear him now. Open up that door, boy. And the last time we talked, you actually talked about. It. It's funny. You just said like you're a family man, or you grew up a family man, and um, your father wasn't all lovey dovey, but. He was like there, and you said you wanted to be there in your kids' lives. Um, what what are you doing now to take to take steps to be that in your kids' lives, in your grandkids' lives? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, mm-hmm. I haven't I haven't done anything since we talked. Uh, I suppose I went to you know, to go see my grandkids, but. Something came up, which uh, I, I couldn't really put that to the side because it wasn't that pressing. You know what I mean? Something I, you know, I, I done, but I could have put that to the side. And like sometimes, like I, I, I let things uh, side sidetrack me. I might say, okay. I, I Facetimed her, and she didn't answer the Facetime. So then, uh, my friend, he lives like well maybe 10, 15 minutes away from me. And and he said that his, he didn't have no heat in his house. I said, oh, I said, and he really don't know about the furnace, the, you know, power light going out and all that kind of stuff, reset the furnace. So I said, oh, I'll be over there in about, you know, you only live like 15 minutes, but I said, I'll be there in, in, in a minute. So, you know, I jumped in the car and I went to his house, you know, and, and all you know, all it was, you know, friends like you know went out. So after I did that, uh, we sat upstairs and had a couple of beers and started talking, and uh, and I came home. Instead of hanging out with your daughter. Yeah, yeah. So I could, I like I said, I could have just went there, did the furnace, and just left, and 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 did what I was supposed to do. How come you let those things distract you? I'm not really sure. Do you want to continue being the family man? And is it still important to you to be a part of your kids' lives? Absolutely. How are you going to know when things have changed to the point where you're not being distracted by those other things and being in your children's lives is more important than any of those other things that come up? Well, my my, my intentions was just to go there and just to light it. Uh, to see what was going on, and once I realized that you know the power light was out, it was it was you know it was not extremely crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, yep. what I should have done, I should have just lit the power light and uh and got got my car and just, and did what I was, was uh my, the rest of my day was gonna be planned to do. 
What is it that keeps you out of your children's lives? I I think I I lose focus on a a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? I I allow things to uh, interfere. Like I I would like lose focus. Like I was like, I said, when I first got my car, I said, I come over there on my mind. I was going to go to his house and knock it out, get back in my car and, and go up north. But when I got there, I just lost focus on what I was, my intentions was, was. That's my main issue. You know what I mean? I let things sidetrack me, or I, 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 let, I allow people to sidetrack what what what, I, what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? How do you think that impacts your children when they know you'll get sidetracked and not be connected to them? I, I know it, it's, it's been extremely uh devastating to them you know primarily uh because that's been my issue basically i don't never follow up on what i'm gonna say i'm gonna do you know what i mean uh i might might make a appointment to do something or make some type of arrangement and i don't just follow up you know what i mean that's where my main issue is to follow up on my promises and nine times out of ten it don't even be uh that sidetrack me don't even be like Life threatening or or extreme emergency or anything of that nature, you know what I mean? Freddie, would you would you be pleased to be that way? Like honestly, if you started making promises specifically and especially to your kids and following up on those promises, would you be pleased to be that kind of a person? Absolutely, and I, I think that probably would uh, change our whole dynamic of our relationship you know because i think that's primarily the, the the main issue where i'm feeling w- with them at i always tell myself i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be better with this and better with that you know and then i and i, and I still find out damn I'm, I'm still the same way you know what i mean like i said i'm gonna do this and i fall short of doing it you know and and my fiance always she always tell me i thought you posted with up, up north today i said oh yeah i posted that went but i ain't, i ain't go which one of your kids were you going to go visit? Oh, I was going to go to j Yeah, how did she respond when you didn't show up? Oh, I, I think she was uh, kind of upset with me because I had called her yesterday to try to FaceTime her and she didn't answer the FaceTime call. So I don't know if she was busy or if she was, like, upset with me because I, I haven't really talked to her since then. What do you think it would do to Jay to have you actually showing up and following up with your word? Oh, make her feel like I'm dependable. I'm, I'm, I'm a man of my word. You know what I'm saying? If I say I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there. You know what I mean? What do you think it would do to Jane and the rest of your kids, even, if you were doing things like that for them? If you were like showing up for them and helping them with their fixtures and their pools and their kids and their, you know, kitchen appliances or whatever? Like, what would it do to Jane and the rest of your kids to have you show up for them like that? Well. I I supposed to be going to Jack Queen's house and and building this this burrow, which I put I put that she asked me to do it. I think like a month ago, you know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. And I I haven't got around to that yet. Jay does eyebrows and all that kind of stuff, so she she wanted me to fix a fix a room downstairs in her basement. So I, I built the room, uh, put the floor down, I painted and and. Now she's able to do, you know, she got a place for her to do her eyelashes for people. So then she wanted me to uh, build another room, um, which I, I started, uh, but we waiting on some more f- uh, fundings uh, to finish. I built the other room. I put uh, a bathroom down there and uh, a toilet, a sink. When did you do all that? About two months ago. Well, actually, I'm not really uh, finished yet. Uh, I still the project is is, is delayed. Of uh, not on my account. Uh, cause she, her, her car broke down, so she had to buy a new car. So that kind of took some of the fundings away from doing the the, the room. So she said, "When uh, okay, when things pick back up, she gonna uh, we're gonna start back doing it." So what do you think it does to Jay when you show up for her consistently like that? It's funny because, like, 
she be working with me. I explain to her how to, how to do it step by step with her. Then we just work nine times out of ten. We we do it together, you know. And and, and I and I be telling, I I kind of do I kind of go do things like that so we could have that quality time together. So like when the project is completed, you know, what I'm saying it's nothing like putting your effort into something and then when it's completed, it, it, you could say, well, I did that. You know what I mean? Okay, wait, wait, stop for a second. Stop for a second. You just said something brilliant. Say that one more time just so I make sure I heard it. There's nothing like, say that one more time. Oh, uh, like me and her uh, uh, tackling a project uh, when it's completed, then you say to yourself, well, me and my, my dad did that. You know what I mean? Or we we did this together. You know what I mean? So there's nothing like when you put forth the effort and you see a task completed, right? Yeah. And can I be totally honest with you? Sure you can. I'm trying to figure out how do I get Freddie to work harder to be more connected to Jaden and the rest of the kids, but starting with Jaden, how can I do that? How, wh- what can we do to help you work harder to make those relationships happen? Well, I think now, to, uh, like I said, once uh, I got to make sure if I, if I say uh, make some type of arrangements for to do anything with any of my kids, I got to make sure that that time is solely for them. You know what I mean? I don't have no things to overlap it or nothing that's going to intervene with it. I got to make sure that my schedule Mm -hmm. is, is arranged just for them. I need to figure out a way for you to do something for Jay that would look to her like you keeping your word. Anything. What could it be? Hmm. Well, I, I was thinking I, w- I was just going to go there on, on, on Saturday uh, and just knock on the door. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I'm here. You know what I mean? Okay. Because uh, I, I don't, I don't I, 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 I'm afraid to say, uh, Hey Jay, I'm gonna be there on Saturday, and uh, and I don't show up. You know what I mean? I, I can't have that happen anymore. Well, how about we do the opposite? How about we say, "Hey Jay, I'm gonna show up on Saturday," and then you do everything humanly possible to show up, not get distracted, nothing. I'm going to show up because she needs to know you can do that. You need to know you can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. So how about we do that? Let's tell her I will show up on Saturday. She's probably going to say, I doubt it. No, you ain't, blah, 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 whatever. But then when you show up on Saturday, she'll be like, he did it. And you'll be able to say you did it. Right. Guys, I can I explain to you something. I'm going to tell you something that uh, occurred. My grandson's birthday was two days ago. And uh, it, it, kind of, it kind of broke my heart, too, uh, in a way. Uh, cause we was, we was on getting through uh Facebook, and they was singing happy. His mother was singing happy birthday to him, you know, with the cake in front of him on the on uh at, at the table, and the computer facing him with like seven people on it, the aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. on the Zoom call. And, you know, I was like. Wow, I said to myself, "Wow, I didn't even get, I didn't even get a invite." You know what I mean? Right. So I'm like, "What what that tells me?" That's his grandfather. You know what I mean? That you know I am not even a part of his life. He's only five years old. You know what I mean? Right. And like, so I said to myself, "Oh, you can't blame nobody but yourself." You know what I mean? You can't feel bad. You can't go in the corner and just cry. You know what I mean? You can't blame nobody. So what you going to do about this? What you going to do about next year when he turns six? You know what I mean? Uh, or you going to, you know, is, is it going to be anything different than right now the way you feel? You know what I mean? Like, and you'd like it to be different next year? Absolutely. So, you know, and, and the primary steps I got to take, they ain't hard ones. 
You know what I mean? They, they're not hard ones. Right. You know, what I mean? and like, uh, they ain't but like seven buttons on the, on the phone. You know, and I, I used to talk to them all the time on, on, on WhatsApp, you know, mm-hmm. like last year, you know what I mean? Which have a few things have probably developed from now to then, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and sometimes people take harsh measurements for the littlest reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, like, say, like, uh, over, over $5, over, uh, I forgot, I forgot to do that, you know what I mean? Right. And they 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 take harsh harsh measurements over that, and then you be like, damn, was it was it that serious? You saying to yourself, maybe not to me, it wasn't that serious, but it might have been serious as hell to them. That's all, uh, you know. Little you be like judgmental with things. You know what I mean, that don't damn, that don't bother me, but that shit bothered the shit out of somebody else. You know, you know like. And Freddie, it's making me think about something. And and again, I got to ask you a really hard question. <laughs> you got a lot of hard questions. I know. I do, man. I'm sorry. But how come you left and went to Florida? Well, I, I think we I went to uh, Disneyland and just fell in love with Florida. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what. And my life wasn't really that that bad. It, in, in, in Jersey, let me tell you the story. What happened to me? Mm-hmm. This guy that I was telling you talking to before, um, yeah, he's worked for for seven years, and like, like he buy houses and buildings, whatever, you know, and just go in, we gut them out, whatever, whatever, fix them back up, you know. And he has a uh, timeshare in Florida, so I'm like, he said, "Well, y'all, going, what you gonna do for 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 uh, vacation?" I said, "I don't know yet, man." So. So I said, I'd love to take the kids to Disneyland. He said, well, um, okay, I got property down there. He said, what do you mean you got property, property down there? He said, I got time shit down there. You know, if you go and go, you know, you can stay there. I'm like, this guy is you, something else, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I fire. So we get to, we pack up, go to plane tickets and everything, go to Disneyland for two weeks. So when we was down there, it was like, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know, this mesmerized, like, you know, I know this is my first time being in Florida, but it was just so I don't know, I don't know, majestic. I don't know. It was it just it just got me, mm-hmm. and it, and she was somewhat overwhelmed too, I think. And so we went to the realtor, and they started sending us properties um, when we got back to back home. So there's one particular one we we liked. Um, and the, and the numbers was pretty decent. It was, you know, so we, got, we moved to Florida. We ain't know nobody down there. So just me and her and the, and the kids. <laughs> and we just moved to Florida. And that's the story of Florida. Why, while you were in Florida, how come you didn't stay in contact with Jason and the other kids? I don't know. I don't really, I don't even know why I didn't. If I if I showed you a way to fix that, how happy would you be? <laughs> uh, so happy, I probably would. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think one time I was in I was in Vegas and I was I was doing the uh, playing the slot machine and you hear those bells go off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how happy I would be. You know what I mean? If you like, you like go off. Yeah, like, you know, ching, ching, ching. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll be a winner. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know. Freddie, I really want to help you with that. I want to help you be a winner. All right, cool. Sounds great. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to do something hard, though, sir. Okay. Uh, you remember earlier in our conversation when you said... You said like something small will happen, like even something like five dollars. Yeah, and it might not be a big deal to you, but it'd be a big deal to them, and and it makes it hard. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I think one of the reasons it's hard is because they are hurt by something you did in the past, 
So even though this new thing might be small, it's kind of compounded with the other stuff to them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I want to add, I want to show you how to fix that. And I think you already know because you keep saying things like, I just want to know them and be a part of their lives. And I, the way to do that is you have to keep calling them. I know. And I, 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 I don't, I don't, I think, and, and, and somebody else told me, uh, uh, that's the same I got to do. You know what I mean? They first, they told me before you call them, have your conversation drawn out in, in, in your mind already. Mm. Like you haven't going to do a play. Now you, the first play that you, uh, you write in, in, in the conversation is, is, is going to be a, a, the good one as far as co the conversation go well. You're going to, uh, Laugh and joke, and it's going to be a good conversation. And you, and you're going to see some, you know, development from the conversation that you that you you have. And then on this side, you gotta have to play a not so good conversation, uh, uh, argumentative, uh, uh, profanity, the whole whole ten yards. Mm -hmm. You know, so now. You gotta uh, have yourself in, in a fixation where uh, you gotta have the the answer for that, or not the answer at that time, but not be uh, so, uh, for victim of, of the anger and the thing. You gotta be able to be able to understand it and take it in and, and use it and work with it. And not, you know, be volatile or, or, or explode over, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they're releasing their feelings and their emotion and the pain that they probably have been built up in, the, in, the, in their lives for 5, 10, 20 years, you know? And sometimes, you know, uh, your reaction can't be um, a haste one, you know? Yeah, or, yeah of course. And you know you guys be able to be able to suck it in because you, you you did wrong. You know you you hurt you hurt somebody, and they releasing their pain. They got released their pain so they could heal. You know and 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 you got to be acceptable to that. And sometimes you know uh, that's what I'm fighting with as far as that conversation because like uh, I go over the I go over the conversation in my mind. You know and I was like. If I'm gonna be able to stand for all that, you know what I mean. If I'm gonna be a, you know, to take the pain that they 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 have and and, and absorb it and, and work with it, you know what I mean. Yes. I know I probably every part of it or majority of it, and and, and on one aspect or another, but therefore, I cannot be accountable for my mistakes. You know what I mean. Do they know that you want to be accountable for your mistakes? You know, I, I think I, at one time or another, I expressed my feelings that, you know, damn. You know, I, I, you know, I f***ed up. You know, I, I, you know, I messed up in, in, in some aspect of your life, but I try to justify it or, or you, look, you still turned out okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just to ease my pain. Yeah. You know, just ease my, you know what I mean, my guilt. You know what I mean? Well, let's let's see if we can do that in a better way, Freddie. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to do, I don't want you to think about, like, the two conversations like you were just saying. What I want you to do is I want you to call each of the seven kids. And before you do, I want you to remind yourself of the reason you're calling them which is to be in their lives. So if they express pain, hurt, just remember, I'm just trying to be present in their lives. Mm -hmm. I want them to experience their father. I want the grandkids have access to the grandfather. 
and I want you to have them in your life. And I want you to just remind yourself, like, I'm only doing this because I want to be in their lives. And that, when you when you think about it in that way, then it won't matter whether they're angry or happy or excited. None of that stuff matters because you just want to get to know them. And it might start with them being angry because there's been hurt there. And there's a part of you that is so eloquent. There's a part of you that accepts, like, I probably caused some hurt. And I'm willing to acknowledge that. And a lot of people don't say that. I want them to get to know that part of their father. But you're going to have to keep showing up in order for that to happen. So my challenge for you is between now and the next time we meet, I want you to reach out to all seven kids. Can you do that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then we're going to figure out a way to keep that going so that you are in their lives. It's... it's it's not a hard thing to do. And then it's like, uh, you, you get so uh, caught up in, in, in your daily day activities. You're like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And that I'm going to do it never comes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and exactly what you said before. And then before you know it, two, three weeks have gone by. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm going to hold you accountable. I want you to call each of the seven kids between now and the next time we meet. Uh, and before you have each phone call, I just want to remind yourself why you're doing this because I just want to be a part of their lives, okay? Okay. Freddie, it was wonderful to talk to you, man. And likewise, man, likewise. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Fatherhood is the man's ability to live up to the parental responsibilities that they have. It's having an influence on your children. It's being there for your children. It's, it's being able to sacrifice for the betterment of your children. Fatherhood represents all of those things. And for one reason or another, those things were a significant challenge throughout Freddie's life. I think the absentee father like idea in the Black community is very, very prominent. And in some cases, I think overstated and, and exaggerated. However... Freddie represents the stereotype of the absentee father, but he also represents what I think is, is very often understated, which is the outlier to that stereotype, which is the father that like wants to create healing and reconnection and loves his children, even in adulthood and wants to mend things and, and takes accountability and acknowledge his flaws and acknowledges his role in whatever has gone wrong. If Freddie were listening to this, I would want to make sure he continues to make himself available to his children and whatever emotions these children want to express to him as he tries to reconnect. If you're a father in a similar situation, you have to go through this process without expecting to feel comfortable but also making the decision to be consistent, which is I'm going to call my children. I'm going to reach out to my children. I'm going to text my children. And even if the response is negative and or angry, I'm going to reach out again. I'm going to reach out again. I'm going to reach out again. The thing that children need to see as you work on becoming dependable and consistent in their life is dependability and consistency. They need to know that you're not going to be gone again. So you have to show up even when it's hard, even when it's uncomfortable, even when you know that the conversation is going to go poorly. And if you can do that, you have the opportunity and you have a reasonable chance of healing those difficult relationships. Forgiving yourself is one of the most important skills in terms of mental health and healing. And the reason this is true is because no one is perfect. So everyone is going to make mistakes of varying degrees. And if you don't forgive yourself for those mistakes, then you end up having guilt, remorse, shame, resenting yourself. You end up self-sabotaging progress. You've got to accept that you are a flawed human being 
and as a consequence have made mistakes along the journey and understand that you have the ability to correct, mend, and heal from those mistakes. Forgiveness is the greatest gift you will ever give yourself. And it is a gift that literally every single human being on the planet needs to know how to give themselves. It's very, very important to honor the past and to acknowledge the past, but to not allow the past to determine what you do in your future. In some ways, we have to release ourselves from that past so that we can create a different and in a lot of ways, more positive future. One of the biggest mistakes that we make is we think about our past and we have these negative experiences, remorse, regret, all those sorts of things. And we allow ourselves to make current decisions from the perspective of remorse and regret. And you can't do that. You've got to just forgive yourself that it happened and do the very best you can moving forward. Now, we're never going to forget the past and it should always inform what we do, but not from a place of fear, not from a place of regret but instead from a place of hope. If you can remember something went wrong in the past and I have a lot of hope that I can make that, that situation better in the future, then that's how you make decisions moving forward. And that's exactly how you release the past and become the best version of yourself today. If you are a father who has experienced an estranged situation from your child, you've been separated from your child for one reason or another, I hope this episode would inspire you. And in fact, I want to ask you to reach out to those children. Text them, call them, send an email, begin the process of reconnecting those relationships. And we here at The Black Effect would love it if you would share those stories with us by commenting on social media, commenting after you listen to the podcast, or reaching out to us in some other way, but we would love to hear those stories. This is not just a podcast that I want you to consume and be entertained by. I actually want you to be inspired. I want you to be impacted by this. And in fact, we can't help but be impacted by the content we consume. So what I would like for you to do is come on this healing journey with us. Come on this journey of change, rediscovery with us. And the way to do that is to just pay attention to the things going on in your life as a consequence of listening to this podcast. Pay attention to things in your life shifting in a more desirable way. Pay attention to your desirable outcome becoming your reality. Pay attention to evidence of your success, your resilience, and your strength. And let us know in the comments what you're noticing in your life as a result of listening to this podcast and as a result of paying attention to these things. I would love to hear from you about your healing journey, your family, and your feedback. Leave a review, send a DM, connect with me on socials at Elliot Speaks. And you can also send me a text message to 972-426-2640. Family Therapy is a production of iHeartRadio and the Black Effect Podcast Network. Special thanks to our assistant, Glenn Del Sepe, the music supervisor, Bo Dozier. It's produced by Jacques Thomas and the executive producer, Dolly Bishop. The content presented on the Family Therapy Podcast serves solely for educational and informational purposes. It should not be considered a replacement for personalized medical or mental health guidance and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. It is advisable to consult with your healthcare provider or health team for any specific concerns or questions you may have.